Right, I've just finished my custom built um, silent air compressor that I showed in my previous video. Um, I've made quite a few uh, air compressors in my lifetime and I think I like this one the best. And I've called this one a silent air genie. So I got this tank off of an old compressor, I took the um, motor off the top of that one um, I took the component off the front of that one and shone a torch inside and I was really surprised to see uh, the steel was as good as new in there just a slight bit of discoloration in places but no rust so I thought it would be a good tank to use um, the compressor here is off of a fridge um, I had a second hand one which I um, took off I sanded the um, uh, metal down or the uh, the body down with um, wet and dry and um, just got a nice dull finish on that um, because the actual black paint's a good base uh, for spray paint and I sprayed it red with a low cost um, spray 151 red this is an acrylic based um, spray there's no need for any undercoat and it's good resistance to oil and heat that these produce I think it's only a pound of tin and um, it's very hard wearing pain and I made up the manifolds uh, this solid aluminium handle and um, sprayed the section red before I um, fitted it in so it matches and makes it look good and then I got all the um, components that I had in stock this uh, regulator here was leaking so I carefully took that one apart um, they're easy to maintain, just take them apart, clean them up. Um, I put this part in the lathe here and polished the bore again and then put it all together with silicon grease and that one's as good as new. And the only um, real cost that I had was the uh, pressure switch which I bought for under £6 post free on eBay and that one's automatic and um, factory set at 115 psi like i say the tank is eight liters um, when it's going it takes four minutes to pressurize this tank to 115 psi before it automatically shuts off so these types of compressors are no good for actual air tools. They're best suited for spray paint airbrushes. If you uh, plug a water trap into that, you can actually take them indoors to blow out the dust in a computer. Um, you can obviously blow up car tires being portable. It's easy to take round. And the beauty of these is the actual silence. Uh, when using them, you can use them indoors and they won't disturb anybody. I find them really great to use um, like when you're actually taking watches or clocks apart. Um, I use an airline um, with an um, airbrush on the end, no paint in it, so it's used dry and use that to blow out the dust like on the inside of a watch or whatever. Now if you're converting one of these um, fridge compressors uh, you'll find that they have three pipes. This is the inlet pipe. Um, the pipe here is normally bent at a right angle crimped and I think it's either for um, filling with refrigerant um, fluid or oil um, so that one's like crimped and sealed off and this is the outlet so you want really good fittings on all those pipes um, I made up a, a brass um, quarter inch BSP uh, fitting here and um, drilled so it's a nice tight fit on that pipe clean the pipe up um, that was sawn off nice and square you have to be careful you don't drop any dirt down inside and then I knocked that one on with Loctite 638 
put a doughty seal on there, made up the air filter and that one can screw on there like that. On this one the actual pipe was um, sawn off square again and I found it to be exact diameter to actually thread with um, 1 8 BSP. I had this fitting here which is a steel fitting um, female uh, 1 8 BSP uh, fitting there so that screwed straight on there and it was a quarter inch BSP male um, thread that end and I made this tube up here threaded that uh, screwed that on with a doughty seal and then I made up a screw cap um, for an oil filler and marked that up with the actual oil it uses which is ISO 68. And on the high pressure outlet um, I've used hexagon brass. I sawed off this pipe nice and square again, cleaned it up and it had a couple of nice actual grooves in there. So before I knocked this um, one on, I drilled a hole through the side right through here and one in the top so it would go into the bore. And then I knocked that one onto the cleaned up pipe so that those holes were positioned over one of the grooves and I filled that with solder. So it's an absolute solid fit. Um, this is um, threaded, by the way, uh, this end for 1 8 BSP and I've got a tail end pipe fitting uh, 1 8 BSP tapered thread screws into that and that's a real nice um, solid uh, out. And the reason I used hexagon brass here is that I can actually um, steady it with a spanner while I'm actually screwing the tail end in and it won't actually twist or damage the pipe. And if you're um, fitting hoses on compressors, always use these, um, they call them ear clips. Um, they just go over the um, pipe on the tail end here and you can actually squash each side of the vise or you can actually get a special um, pair of plier tools to do that. And they're much uh, more secure than Jubilee clips um, and also Jubilee clips don't look professional and you can often catch your hand on the actual tail of the Jubilee kit on the top. So if you're new to engineering and you want to save yourself lots of money, go to car boot sales or recycle centres and buy up all sorts of metal components. Um, I bought some components uh, probably eight, ten years ago and I've never used them. I've had them in storage and um, when I was making this compressor I suddenly thought of them and it was these here, good solid pieces of aluminium just under an inch in diameter and you can actually see what I've used those for. I cut them to length, um, threaded them with um, eight millimeter um, threads um, through the underside here and then I've screwed those on um, with 8mm stainless steel bolts. Um, this section here was drilled through to accept 8mm um, bolts again and this centre section here which I've sprayed red was threaded for 8mm and the handle screwed in between those. So like I say, buy up all sorts of metal components, put them in storage and you'll never know when you need them. And this is another one that I've made of another component and I'll show you how you can make this in a matter of minutes on any lathe. So I made my um, custom air filter out of an um, ordinary brass doorknob, chrome plated. Um, just knock out the uh, circlet there, 
Um, this one had a spring sail clip, so I put that in a vise and used a bar on there and knocked that one down until it came out. Um, these ones here have a little circlip so you can just use circlip pliers and you can get all different modern ones in various thicknesses. This is a nice thick brass one, this one's a bit thinner and this is the thin chrome plated one that I used. So if you get a doorknob and you want to use it for this um, air filter just check that the thickness here um, that it's thick enough for the quarter inch BSP and obviously enough um, to be drilled out for that thread and to hold them um, you don't want to hold on the front there because it's there's a danger of it flipping out you hold it on this um, thick diameter here and push the um, radius here up against the front of the jaws and that way it'll hold it nice and tight and there's no way that it can actually flip out of the jaws. And now the quarter BSP tap, I'll put the lathe in neutral for safety and my handle light on and I do give it a little spray with thin oil.
and just basically start that thread off. And that's enough. And then I leave the um, tap in there nice and square and then finish it off um, in a chuck that's held in the vise. and just tap that one through. And then I um, saw this um, lug off here. just finish it off on the disc sander. And if you want to, you can hold on this 30 millimeter bore here, open the jaws out onto that one, and then just take a nice um, light skim on there if you haven't got it um, dead square on the um, disc sander. But if you do that, be very careful that you take very light cuts because the wall thickness on these um, chrome plated ones is very thin and it's easy to actually spin it off the jaws. And just a quick buff up and polish. And that's the air filter finished. And for the actual filter I use some, some foam like this. Um, get a, a doorknob with the end on there like that and just draw around that one. and then cut that one out. Doesn't have to be exact because it's much bigger than the actual diameter of the inside of the um, doorknob or the air filter. And then just push that one into the housing like that. And I put um, two pieces in there for good measure and then um, just use a end of a paintbrush or whatever and push it back up and that will seat it all round on the inside when it's correct it'll just protrude slightly like that and you've got a good visual of how clean that air filter is And then that one just screws on there like that. And it's all ready to go.
and I've got the automatic switch um, properly connected up to the actual check valve on the front of the um, cylinder and when the um, automatic switch shuts off it releases a bit of air and takes the pressure off the head of the piston. When the compressor restarts um, there's actually no pressure on that piston and it can start up easily. So now it's just coming up to full pressure and it should shut off and you can hear that um, blast of air to release that pressure. And that's the compressor finished.